Hello everybody, welcome to the Daily Sip. My name is Oliver and my mission is to bring you closer to organic Japanese green tea and today we were gonna dive into is to make a matcha latte with a ceremonial grape matcha and a culinary grape matcha. So these are the two matchas we will use today and um, we're gonna dive directly into it. So when we talk about matcha latte, this is something which is most of the time uh, kind of the first touching point that you might have with matcha or even maybe with Japanese green tea. But there are so many different kinds of matcha, so many different brands out there. So the topic of today is really that I want to guide you through on the one hand, what is taste-wise the difference? And before I do that is I want to dive into, okay, what is actually, if you want to go for higher grade matches for uh, your uh, latte, what's the kind to use and what are the main differences to a so-called latte grade or also called culinary grade matcha. So when we first just have a look at the different qualities. So I prepared here um, two small plates of matcha and you can see already when we look at the powder here um, the latte grade or culinary grade and here we are having the ceremonial grade. So you can already see in terms of color it's quite a big difference between these two. So um, here we have a little bit more of a yellowish color with a little bit more um, of uh, sometimes even slightly grayish color. Here in this case it's really the green going a little bit more into the yellowish and here um, we have uh, the ceremonial grade matcha which is very beautiful green so you can see um, uh, the beauty of a good or high quality matcha, a ceremonial grade matcha is actually its intense green color. You can have even more intense green color. This is then depending a little bit also on the cultivar. So um, there we have actually the first point of differentiation. When we um, look at these matches, so why or where is this uh, color difference coming from? So it, first hand it is that the ceremonial grade matcha is often shaded. Normally it should be shaded, some brands apparently sell it as a non-shaded tea but still as a ceremonial because ceremonial is not a protected term but in general when you're going for a ceremonial grape matcha you will receive a very beautiful green and this greenness comes especially from the shading process because the leaves they get a little bit darker um, then the normally so the, the the color gets a little bit lighter when the tea plant is not shaded and the shading provokes that um, you have a higher amount of caffeine, you have a high amount of chlorophyll and um, you have a higher amount of amino acids. So the so-called L-theanine which is kind of the biggest amino acid then in the tea leaves and this then provokes a tea taste which is going more into a sweetness and the less astringent taste profile. And this is not the case when we go on the latte grade matcha. So you can see um, the difference is really, um, it's a little bit more pale. So this is a mix of uh, second and third harvest. So um, here we are not applying any shading. Often on the second harvest, the farmers do not apply any shading anymore. And that's why also the color is a little bit lighter. Then on the other hand, um, we talked about it before. So the shading itself, kind of uh, reduces the stringency of the tea, makes it more sweeter. So in the end, you're actually having a tea which is a little bit more astringent than the ceremonial grade. And that's why also it is called culinary grade. It's a tea or tea, uh, matcha tea, which you are using for culinary um, things like baking, maybe uh, you make creams with it, or you can also use it as a matcha latte. So why actually the culinary grade can we use it for the matcha latte and uh, what we can we expect from the difference between these two teas. So um, when we go into the field of matcha latte, often what you're using is a little bit of honey. Um, you can add a little bit of sugar maybe, or you just use a milk which is a little bit sweeter. What is always important is when you do green tea that you use a tea or a milk to the, which is from a plant-based plant source. So it's not a dairy milk. The reason is that the casein, so the protein within or in the cow milk actually or in the dairy milk 
um, buffers down the positive effects of the polyphenols, which have, uh, which are the catechins. Catechins are uh, responsible for the meat more detoxifying effect of the green tea. So try to stay away from dairy milk and use plant-based milk. Um, so the reason also you can use this is that the plant-based milk then has a little bit more of sweetness with it. So it buffers down or it lowers a little bit the astringency of the tea and that's why it's super easy actually to use a little bit of a lower quality matcha also for your matcha latte. But today I want to really explore a little bit, okay, what are the differences in terms of taste between these two matchas? I will first prepare them as uh, normal with a little bit of water. I will do that cold, so I use cold water because I want to ha use a cold matcha latte, but you can also do the process, certainly you can do it hot. Um, and then already compare as a first sip just the pure matchas and then uh, explain you a little bit the difference, but then the main topic will be um, to go really and dive into um, uh, the taste profile when it's done as a uh, matcha latte and is there a big difference or can you absolutely just go directly for your culinary grade matcha. So then um, what I uh, brought with me today was the traditional set. So what you can also use when you do your matcha latte is actually a milk frother. Super easy to use. Um, this is definitely something uh, you can have in your kitchen, super cheap. You can find it at Walmart or any big grocery stores. Normally you should find that. Um, this one is a little bit more uh, difficult to get, uh, often on specialized in specialized store for tea or even Japanese grocery stores, um, which you might have in your neighborhood or in your city. But I like to uh, prepare it here um, uh, in the traditional way. But as I said before, uh, you can absolutely do it without the, the traditional or not in the traditional way. So first I will start with the culinary grade. What is important with the matcha as uh, the tea leaves, they get a little bit of the humidity of the air. So it soaks up a little bit the humidity. There are some crumbs which are forming. So um, what I always suggest to you is to sift first the matcha before you use it. There's no real technique um, which can uh, replace the sifter in my opinion. Um, it is just something um, I like the most. Um, there are some people they just take the chasen and they kind of um, squash the small crumbs that are forming but uh, in general this is definitely the best and the easiest way to just get it out because even with the chasen or the whisk which I have here, um, you don't get all the small crumbs. And finally, you can have a little bit of this crumbs in your matcha latte. And it's definitely something we want to avoid. Good. So then I use a little bit of water. You can also use directly the milk. Uh, there's absolutely um, no issue with that, even when you want to have this kind of a little bit of a stronger milky flavor. You can use this. I just using here around 40 milliliters, a little bit more than an ounce of water. The matcha itself brings quite a good, of, good amount of taste with it, but definitely I'm watering down the milk a little bit, but in my opinion, this is, or today I don't really care about this because the matcha flavor will be very nice, but I don't use a lot of water as you can see. So um, this is now the culinary grade matcha. So I'll put it here. And then uh, we do directly the ceremonial grade. I just washed this out real quick. I can use the same. Good. Now two grams which I used already before. Now two grams of the ceremonial grade. Do exactly the same process. So I'll take the leaves, take the matcha, the powder, and I gonna just sift it. It's a super fast process and you get uh, used to it. If you don't have one of these um, Bamboo spoons, you can also take a normal spoon, absolutely no problem. In terms of measurement, um, just take one uh, teaspoon 
of matcha, which is then two grams. Uh, super easy to do, to measure out, so there you don't need all these sophisticated tools. And the sifter, um, you don't need this kind of Japanese matcha sifter. You can also buy just a $1 sifter in your grocery stores, which can also be made out of plastic. That's absolutely no problem. Good. So then we go the second one. I try to use the same amount of water. And I also make this zigzag always. Voila. Good. And then let's put this in. So already for you to compare that you see it, what is the difference between the colors of these two teas. So we definitely get a stronger color in the terms of green. So what we saw on the leaves or on the powder before repeats itself. Here I have a little bit less water, which I used. So just try to bring it on the same level. Good. So now we have these two matchas, same level. What you see here a little bit is that you have a little bit more of foam, which was forming. Um, with the production of the uh, matcha, here is a little bit less foam uh, which is involved. Um, my personal theory is that um, what we know is that the um, shaded matcha has a little bit more of an amino acid, so it has a higher content of amino acids, so the nutrient richer um, young leaves, shaded leaves, first harvest leaves, they give a little bit more of nutrients. Um, even um, uh, with uh, the amino acids, we can say that it is up to four times the amino acids in this tea uh, than with this one here. So um, there is definitely a difference in nutrients and also the caffeine content is a little bit higher in this one. Here we talk about 68 milligrams for this serving. Here we talk maybe around 35 to 40. So you can either, you can use a little bit more of uh, matcha powder for your culinary grade or it's just something you need to know when you prepare your matcha with the culinary grade or uh, the latte grade, then uh, you have a little bit less of nutrients and you have a little bit less of caffeine. So um, this is already the main difference in terms of nutrient, uh, nutrients in the tea. Sometimes when the quality is even a little bit lower of um, the um, culinary grade there might be that they don't only use leaves but there are a little bit of stems etc mixed in but um, let's um, try or make the taste difference so as i said before i expect this one so the culinary grade or latte grade a little bit more astringent than the other one but let's just have a small sip mm. so the culinary grade is not very, uh, it's not a big pleasure to drink it pure. Um, you get a little bit more, so already this astringency and I always get this typical little bit, little bit more malty, a little bit more less, a uh, little bit less complex taste profile. So there's uh, quite this nice matcha, a little bit greenish, fresh cut grass, but also a little bit of a hayish flavor, which I'm getting. So, um, and quite astringent. So it is more astringent. It's quite astringent in comparison also to uh, then the, the ceremonial grade, which I will taste right now. And it is definitely a need there to either use a little bit of sugar or honey. Uh, you can also use syrups, any kind of sweeteners or um, then you add something else. That's why also with the culinary grade, it is always promoted to do the matcha latte with it. Um, and now we go for the ceremonial grade. So here I have a sip as well. Mm. Already in the beginning, it's much sweeter, softer, but much more complex, much richer in terms of taste. So here we have quite this, greenish, a little bit malty uh, flavor profile, which comes with it. Here I get a lot of sweetness. Um, there's still, um, there's also this a uh, little bit grassy, a little bit green taste, spinachy taste, but it seems just a little bit fresher, a little bit more um, kind of younger. If I could kind of say here we talk about 
fresh spring summer grass and here we have a little bit of late summer grass hayish notes with it so it seems just a little bit fresher a little bit more intense also in terms of these beautiful green notes and i have a strong strong lingering of this of the similar tastes just staying in my palette and really let me enjoy the taste profile of this tea that's why all also these teas are just amazing to do them um just pure without any sugar and there's a small astringency with it and this comes also a little bit from the cultivar in general when you go for a latte grade um if it's ceremonial, if it's a normal uh, culinary grade, so if you want to make your matcha latte, try to go for a so-called Yabukita cultivar. There's quite a high chance when you buy your matcha that you actually have a Yabukita because it is the green tea cultivar, so the green tea type, which is the most used in Japan, up to 70%. So there's quite a high um, possibility that, especially when you, do, uh, when you take a latte grade, that it is Yabukita. And when you want to go for a ceremonial grade, then try to use a Yabukita. The reason is that the Yabukita itself is quite a bold, strong, kind of green, a little bit this grassy, intense flavor. And it's a little bit of, the, you have a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of stringency. And when you add the milk, the milk with its sweetness then lowers down a little bit this astringent uh, taste profile. So that goes away. So what stays is actually this more intense and grassy flavor. If you take, for example, a Saimidori or Okumidori, which is my uh, favorite uh, matcha, for example. So when I drink matcha, it's most uh, of the time an Okumidori type because it's very smooth, sweet, round, very beautiful tea. But in the matcha latte, as it is not as strong in it's a little bit more intense, grassy, fresh taste and it's much more sweeter and a little bit more decent and rounder and finer in terms of taste profile, then this loses itself a little bit in the milk so it becomes a little bit weak and that's why i uh, personally promote if you want to go for ceremonial grade try to go for a yabukita uh, cultivar and i hope uh, the matcha you're using there's also uh, the ingredients and they tell you what kind of cultivar actually it is good so what will i do now now uh, we're gonna go into the phase of doing preparing the latte. For this, I want some ice cubes. I want it cold. So I put two ice cubes in, in both of them. Number one. And here they are already together. One and two. Good. And now we're going to add the milk. So I use today, um, it's actually a mix of rice and almond milk today. Uh, it's a rice milk with a little bit uh, an add-on of almond milk. Normally when you use almond milk, it's much more transparent, it's less strong. Almond milk is um, quite a fine milk. Um, rice milk itself has a little bit more cereally and sweeter taste profile. I personally like that. It's quite close also um, to uh, oat milk and oat milk is more or less my favorite milk if it comes to matcha latte. But let's just add the milk. For both of them. Why not? Let's just use it up. I think we're good. Okay. Good. So, now what you can also use are these here. You can just swirl it a little bit. But what do you see? I want to take them out. I don't want to use them today. So um, this was just for the swirl. Um, what you see um, already in uh, what you saw before with the pure matchas, this is just definitely more greener, more intense uh, in its green, kind of bright green color. Here we have a little bit of weaker, of a weaker color, but still both of the matches we use the same amount so um here which is the new as uh, said before here we are a little bit more astringent here a little bit more sweet and complex but i'm really really curious now what the milk did now to the taste profile so let's jump right in mm. Mm, it's super decent and what's nice now before I had a strong astringency with this tea 
but the rice milk has this beautiful nice sweetness with it so it really brought down um, uh, the stringency and I have really no astringency when I'm drinking it so it's very beautiful I have a nice kind of um, kind of a fine matcha flavor profile this kind of malty taste texture also went away with by adding the milk because the milk is bringing in this cereally taste which kind of covers this taste and have a nice green also fresh and this by adding zero zero sugar beautiful okay so personally i like it it's now a little bit in the aftertaste. There's a slight astringent lingering. So if you don't like that at all, you can also add in some drops of honey or a little bit of sugar, and then this will go away as the sugar covers the astringency. Now let's go to the second one. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So actually what happens is that um, with uh, the ceremonial great matcha I have a little bit more of a stronger taste profile. So the green note seems to be stronger developed. So this mix of the culinary or the latte grade, it brings a little bit uh, malty texture and a little bit of a softer, not a strong green flavor profile. I assume this is also due to the lower amount of chlorophyll, which can push this note a little bit. And this I clearly get from um, uh, the ceremonial grade. But in terms um, of taste, they're not very far away from each other. So the problem a little bit about the milk used with the ceremonial grade is that it takes a little bit out this complexity and that's the beauty of a ceremonial matcha when you drink it pure it really has this beautiful small fine notes and by adding in the milk this goes a little bit away as the milk itself has quite a strong taste profile and then um, you what i get here is just a little bit of a softer sweet and a little bit stronger in this kind of green, fresh, cut, grassy taste, uh, spinachy taste, which I'm getting a little bit more out of this one here, while here I'm getting a little bit of a weak flavor profile. I can absolutely use a little bit more of powder with uh, the matcha grade, uh, with the latte grade matcha. Um, then this tea might push itself a little bit also more in the astringent um, section. So I would definitely, if I use more uh, powder, then I would definitely use also a little bit of honey or a little bit of sugar just to cover the astringency. But all in all, I must say, um, if you only want to do a latte grade, then you definitely can go uh, for, or if you, if you want to go for matcha latte, then you can use the latte grade or culinary grade. Um, if you want to swap a little bit, then it can be absolutely an option that you go um, for the ceremonial grade. Because when we look into pricing, so here um, we have 40 grams of uh, matcha for uh, $36. Meanwhile, here um, we have $29 for 100 grams. So it's around a third of the price. So here we are around $1. Here we are around 30 cents um, per gram. So the price difference is quite or is present then it really comes down to how uh, you want to start your uh, matcha journey if you want to start and kind of try it out for yourself maybe try first and go for a latte grade and then over time you can slowly slowly swap over and go for the higher quality matcha Good. I hope uh, you like this one too. So um, that's uh, the comparison. Finally, my final verdict, um, I must say, for the matcha latte, latte grade for me is decent. It's nice. And uh, as soon as I want to have a little bit more complexity, and I think if I want to go pure, then I definitely would go for, um, for uh, the ceremonial matcha. It might be a little bit too expensive to do also the matcha latte with the ceremonial grade. Good. So this is this. Thanks a lot for watching. See you and bye bye.